Hello everyone, my name is Craig Simon and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. Today I will talk about in demo a new feature in AWS Lambda called the AWS Parameters and Secrets Lambda extension. With this new feature, AWS Lambda now supports retrieval and caching of parameters from AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store and secrets from AWS Secrets Manager in a much simpler and cost-effective way than was possible before. This lightweight extension caches parameters and secrets and persists them through the lifecycle of the Lambda function or other configured limit. Previous to this extension, developers would need to initialize either the core library of a service or the entire service SDK inside of their Lambda functions, increasing cold start times and requiring the use of additional service API calls to accomplish the task. Now customers can simply use the Parameters and Secrets Lambda extension. To enable the extension, you simply attach a new Lambda layer to a new or existing Lambda function via either the AWS Management Console or the AWS CLI. Just by attaching the Parameters and Secrets Lambda extension layer to your function, it will start working with useful default settings. However, those settings can be altered by adding some specific environment variables to your Lambda function. We'll be covering some of those environment variables in the next slide. The Parameters and Secrets Lambda extension can be used by all supported languages and runtimes that are supported by AWS Lambda. The only language requirements are the ability to make HTTP requests and to handle some return to JSON. I'll quickly go over some of the environment variables that control the settings of the extension. If you'd like more details, all of these environment variables available to developers are fully explained in the extension documentation. The links to the documentation will be in the video description below. First, we have the Parameter Secrets extension cache enabled. This determines if the extension will or will not cache secrets that are retrieved. Setting this to true will enable the local cache in the extension. And the default setting for this value is true. Second, we have the Parameters Secrets extension cache size. This value is the maximum number of secrets and parameters that the extension can cache. The value must be between 0 and 1000. A value of 0 will disable caching. The default value for this parameter is 1000. Next, we have the Parameters Secrets Extension HTTP port. This will be the port of the local HTTP listener that the extension will create. The default value for this is 2773. And then finally, we have the Parameters Secrets Extension Log Level. And this will determine the level of logging that the extension provides. This value must be one of debug, info, warn, error, or none. And the default value for this parameter is info. Let's talk for a moment about the changes that might need to be made to your Lambda execution rule. Depending on the requests you're making, you need to ensure that your execution rule has the proper IAM policies attached to it. That will allow it to successfully make the necessary requests. To allow requests for Secrets Manager, you need the Secrets Manager get secret value permission for the secrets you need to access. As well, to make parameter store requests, you will need the SSM get parameter permission for the parameters you need to access. In either case, if you're using a customer managed key in KMS, you also need to grant the KMS decrypt permission for all needed keys. More details are available in the documentation. Lastly, let's address how to actually make the HTTP request. The process is quite simple. First, all developers need to create the authentication for the request itself. To do that, simply query the local execution environment of your Lambda for an operating system environment variable called AWS underscore session underscore token. That value is generated for every invocation of every Lambda. Use the value of that environment variable to create an HTTP header called x-aws-parameters-secrets-token and make sure that you send that header with your HTTP request. If you're wondering if it's safe to use HTTP and not HTTPS for this request, remember this request is triggering the extension to safely obtain your secrets. No information is being exposed by using HTTP for this request. 
If you, however, look at the URL that we're accessing, you'll see that they're different based on the type of requests we're making. In the case we're making a request for a secret, we're making it to http colon slash slash localhost colon the extension port slash secrets manager slash get and we're specifying a secret ID. In the case of a parameter, however, we're accessing http http colon slash slash localhost colon the port of the extension slash systems manager slash parameters slash get and we're specifying a name for the parameter as opposed to the secret ID. In this demo, let's look at how we might store credentials and connection information to a third-party transactional email service that the Lambda function will access to send emails. First, we'll store a URL in AWS Systems Manager parameter store, and then username and password in AWS Secrets Manager. First, let's create the parameter store entry. So we click on System Manager, we click on Parameter Store, and then we're going to click on Create Parameter. We need to give the parameter a name so that it will be used to access this parameter in the future. In this case, let's call it email underscore URL. We'll set it as a standard parameter, the type of a string, and then the data type will be text. In this case, we would just give it a, a URL like We'll set it to api.example.com slash api slash v1.0 slash auth. This might be the URL that our Lambda function needs to access to authenticate to our API. And then click Create Parameter. Now let's create our secret. So click on Secrets Manager. Click Store a New Secret. We're setting this up for a third-party transactional email service. We're going to go to other type of secret. And I'm going to store a username. So I might use the key of username with a value. And I'm going to add another row. I'm going to store a password. And we'll give it a password and then click Next. We have to give the secret a name. We'll call it My Secret, a description which is optional, and then we can apply any tags we'd like to. And then just click Next. Here we can configure automatic rotation, which we're not going to do, so just click on Next. And then lastly, here's all the information. Just click on the Store button, and then that will create our secret. With the Refresh button, we can now see that we have my secret. Let's spend a few minutes looking at some sample code that I've written to demo how the AWS Parameters and Secrets Lambda extension actually functions. In this case, I'm using Python 3, but the code should be simple enough for anyone familiar with coding to see how this was constructed. From the top, we have our import statements. The only third-party library that I'm using is called requests. It's an extremely common Python library for creating HTTP requests, as the default Python library URL lib can be a little more difficult to work with. Beyond that, I'm importing a few more default Python packages, and then I'm printing a little bit of debug information at the top of my run function. Below that, we have a few lines that obtain the token necessary and set up the HTTP headers to be used later. 
Here I'm querying the system for the value of the AWS underscore session underscore token environment variable and setting up my headers dictionary with that retrieved value. I'm also logging that to ensure that my code is obtaining the proper value. Once the authentication is configured, I'm using that header to make a request for the value from AWS Parameter Store. In this case, it's for a parameter called email underscore URL. When the response is obtained, I'm printing out the response code and the JSON of the response. Once the parameter store value is obtained, then we'll make a similar request for the username and password to use out of AWS Secrets Manager. And again, I'm just printing out the status code of the request and the JSON that is returned. You can see the Lambda function here. If we look at the bottom of this page, you can see that the AWS Parameters and Secrets Lambda extension layer is already attached to my Lambda. However, if it was not, I just need to click the Add a Layer button. Make sure that you are on AWS Layers. Select the layer from the drop-down and then select the version that you would like to attach. At the time of filming, the current version is version 4. The only other thing that I would like to show you here is my extension configuration. To see that, just click on the configuration in the top bar, and then environment variables on the left hand side. Here you can see that the two environment variables that I have set the extension cache enabled is set to true, and the extension log level is set to debug. Here, you can also set any other variables you need to configure your extension. This Lambda is already running. It's making the request that I have coded into the Lambda every minute. To see the results, we just need to look at the logs. Those are stored in CloudWatch. So let's go to CloudWatch. select uh, log groups and then select the log group from the lambda and then select any one of the log streams here you can see i obtained the authentication token from the AWS underscore session underscore token environment variable and printed it out. This will be the value for my x dash AWS dash parameters dash secrets dash token. Next, if we look at the request for the URL from parameter store, we can see that the request was successful due to the 200 status from the response. On the next log line, we can see what is returned when we make the request against Parameter Store. We have things like the ARN that was requested, the data type, a last modification date, the value itself, and a value version, among other metadata. And the request for the username and password against AWS Secrets Manager. We can see the same response code and values we are looking for and more metadata about the request. Thank you very much for the time today. For more information on AWS Lambda or the AWS Parameters and Secrets Lambda extension, please visit aws.amazon.com slash lambda. Thank you.